Mobile Engagement Chassis, Steel Heart, or just Steel Heart, version 0, by Sandro AD, is a mecha tactics tabletop RPG set in the not quite near and not quite far future where the moon exploded into Skyrim with a population of all the dragons, Earth soon re-experienced the Cretaceous extinction event with an 18 kilometers wide monster ball and the majority of humanity now have to live within the bastions, super city fortresses for the remnant of civilizations. It has been a century since and the world has changed, worms are now the new ecosystem and warlords roam the wasteland, humanity now uses a new technically infinite power source called Beryl, a crystal with near magical properties that can power anything from vehicles to buildings to, of course, the mobile engagement chassis, or mech, and you happens to be simultaneously a very lucky and very unlucky person to get a chance to sit in one of these things. You also gonna need a lot of money that's right, after a full year of not reviewing any new indie mecha TTRPG, I'm finally reviewing one once again. So to start things off, to play Steelheart, you gonna want a lot of D6, like a lot a lot, like playing orc in Warhammer 40k lot, basically, for each D6 you roll, called as skill dice here, you can get 0 or 1 or 2 depending on your result, and you will have a lot of dices, add up the result and see if you got past the target number, being just 1 or 2 hits shy of the target number might let you success with the complications, while going beyond it greatly could make your success bigger. There's essentially 3 components to a dice roll, your stats as base skill dices, extra skill dices from just about anything like using the right tools, using gravity, or just being thematically fitting, and risk dice that represents risky situations that can decrease your dice result. This same dice mechanic is also used whether you are on foot to deal with some problems or in your mech fighting some giant worms, though the stats you use are a bit different, same system is also used for any attack roll, with a part stating what stat you can use for the roll, and any hits you get become one damage, and the total damage can get very high. Now, you might be asking, what the heck is gravity, gravity is what tied down soul to earth, or something like that, but in steel heart, gravity is something your pilot gravitates towards, whether it's people, interest, or even rivalry and hatred. As long as it ties down your pilot, it has a gravity to them, and the more important it is, the higher the mass level of the gravity is, which directly translate to how many skill dice you can use for your dice roll at relevant situation, or if you are going against it, or them, those dices might end up being risk dices instead, all of them. Also, gravity isn't just here to make your roll pass, it is your primary means of getting experience, as once a gravity has been used for an episode, you get a check mark besides it that earns you an XP for it, you can call your gravity multiple times, but you only get it checked once per episode. There's also one other thing, bonds, as pilot, you can resonate with your barrel to get a temporary power up, like giving you 3 more skill dices for a roll, and this other thing I will talk when we get to the mech section, essentially, Bonds work as a refreshable limited resource that you only get back at the start of the next episode, so use it wisely, but also don't be too conservative with it. It's also possible to earn bond XP to increase your maximum bond, but let's just say it can be a bit hard to get. Anyway, you can basically just start creating your pilots now, like giving them a blood type, origin, background, starting gravity, fund, etc. These can determine your starting pilot training stats, basically your stats in play when on foot outside of your giant robot, and more, you could also just go for a point by system if you want to. You might also notice some references to Steelheart Black right now, but it essentially doesn't exist yet so just ignore it for now. Steelheart's version 0 is feature complete, but some bits are still lacking in some way, like pilot personal equipment and such, this is very much a work in progress, which is why we will move straight to the mech. In Steelheart, the mech is powered by a barrel crystal through thermal energy, which means, your mech totally gets its power through boiling water, much like modern nuclear reactor, that's right, all of humanity ingenuity is just finding new ways to boil water, and we will keep boiling it all the way into the far future. In steel heart, a mech can be customized with three sections, the mech parts, the mech frame, and the cargo hold, technically, let's talk about the mech parts first, for each mech, there's helmet, core, maneuver, option, and two arm equipments, much like armored core, AC6 is also coming out next month and I'm slowly going insane over it. There's like over 175 mech parts to choose from 32 mechs and more to customize the heck out of your personal mech, and each of these parts can come with stat boost, unique passive, basic attack, restrictive requirement, and also stratagems, which is basically a special skill or ability attached to a part that can be quite powerful. Some parts even come with two or more, and all stratagems have another section to further boost what they can do, which can be alternative attack, 
a chance to trigger additional effect, or intervention, an effect that can be applied on enemy turn as a reaction. However, they have limited uses, what do you do when a stratagem you want ran out, well you can recharge it for one use on field through synergy, synergy represents the energy overflow caused by your barrel resonance and its harmony with your allies barrel, every time you roll in combat, every dice that comes up on even generate one synergy, but you don't get the synergy you generated this way, it is given to your allies instead in a loop. So if you want synergy like right now, you might need to cook yourself a bit, or use your bond, or use a part that generates it. You can also generate synergy for yourself by just shooting your gun, so, yeah no, do that, so what can you do with synergy, well, each pilot on field can only perform two actions on allied phase, but you can burn your synergy at any time even on enemy phase to do a lot of things, like boosting a way to avoid incoming attack, amplify your attack, or even just burn practically your entire synergy bar to perform one more action. If you are lucky enough to get so much synergy your 12 synergy limit can't handle it, you can just immediately burn it to get use out of it. Moving back to the mech part, all these options might feel very dizzy to you, but luckily each mech has a listed focus to tell you what they do best at, for example, Ranger is good with finesse, mobility, and a lot of shooting, Wizard is good at elemental attack, and Berserker is good at killing a hundred men at close range, each mech part also has a listed focus, so you can easily just control F and just find the part you want. So now here comes the other question, how do you improve your mech stats, well you can take a look at this instead, that's right, this game doesn't have upgrade tree, it has upgrade excel sheet, how this thing works is very simple, you just pay for the stats upgrade you want to boost your damage, which can go all the way up to 9 at max, and that's a lot of dices. However, you can only have 18 upgrade nodes at a time, you can purchase other nodes and switch around, but you can only have 18 of them, and now I'm having flashbacks to Mech Warrior online upgrade system. Thankfully, Steelheart upgrade sheet is not remotely as boring as that misery as not only do you get stat upgrade, you also get an associated bonus when the upgrade paths link together, which can incentivize the players to upgrade their mechs in a certain way to further amplify their builds in a unique way. All these systems really build up to a fascinating customization system that can really make the mech of their dream, and if you are really really lucky, you might get something that's just plain impossible to obtain anywhere else. There's also one more thing left that you can customize your mech with, the cargo hold, each mech has 4 cargo slots, which can be increased to 7, and you can fill it with anything from worm trap, kitchen, nitrous tank, dedicated toilet, and even a mysterious cargo you can take to get paid, as long as you don't poke at it. Alternatively, you can leave some of your cargo slots empty to store salvage and loot as you can scrap up mech you have shot down and rip up worms you have hunted down, as these can fetch quite an amount of credits which can be very useful. Finally, let's talk about the foes you might face, in Steelheart, there's a biome generation system that you can use to immediately set up an idea of the battle zone, 8x8 to 15x15, you can even set up an entire region quickly via a bunch of 2d6 rolls, one to determine high or low column, and the other to roll for the row. Presumably, the book never actually said what high or low means in mechanic definition, I'm just extrapolating it from potential sources, and it would be a good idea to actually define what this mean in the later version. But other than that, after generating the biome, somehow, you can roll up the enemies based on how hard you want the fight against your players to be, which makes it very quick to set up, as long as you can accept that your map might look like crap. There's also bosses, with plenty of powerful abilities to make them a reckoning, and this is where I teach you the concept of player action allowance, essentially, there's only a limited amount of player actions the players can do on allied phase before the boss and their minions beset upon you, but players that have done their action cannot perform more in the following allied phase until all players have finished using theirs, so everyone still has a chance to flex their hydraulics. This also means that you want to carefully plan out your moves against bosses, as they can do quite a bit of damage before everyone could take actions, PAA is also used against common enemies, though in this case, the players can all perform their actions on allied phase, but if you want things to be more challenging, you can set an actual limit like 6. One other thing, enemies actually have two types of attacks in Steel Hearts, Clash, and Charge, Clash is kinda your normal attack, nothing special, while Charge is an usually powerful telegraphed attack that can be avoided through boost if you have synergy, GM is even requested to tell the players the range of the charge attack so they know how far they need to boost to avoid which really fits with the theme of mecha tactics because if you watch enough mecha anime and or show, you always have these scenes where the mech just boosted out of the way of an attack via maneuvering, and it's interesting to put this as an actual gaming mechanic. 
There's also tension, basically the synergy equivalent but for enemies which can be used to empower them and make the situations even more dangerous, the trigger for increasing tension could also be different each time too, and this is usually applied when the boss is on field, so the GM could basically telegraph to the player that a boss is coming by just slapping the tension tracker onto the table, which is an hilarious imagery. You probably don't want to use tension all the time or at the beginning of a campaign though, as enemies could get very dangerous with tension system on. Currently, there aren't that many biomes or bosses, and a unit creation system seems to be in the work, but I like everything I have seen so far and I have no doubt Steelheart will continue to develop into something amazing. And that's basically it on Steelheart, version 0, a new refreshing take on the mecha tactics tabletop RPG genre, I really like how the text in the book is sorta of represented as an actual person just talking and explaining it to you, hey look that's Quattro Bagina that said, it's very much lacking in some places, but those can be written in time. The core mechanic and the extensive mech customization system of Steelheart alone really let it stand out on its own, it's really giving me a Super Robot War vibe, even though I have never played Super Robot War before. Now you might ask, how do I know that without playing the game, that's because Steelheart is the first TTRPG I have reviewed to have crossover from other indie TTRPG, featuring otherworldly mechs like, Gawi Gawen from Maharlika, Advent from Armorister Advent, and Hymnal from Blazing Him. Will there be more, I don't know, honestly a lot of things can be asked and answered like that on Steelheart, but I am very eager to look forward to its potential. Anyway, you can get it now on itch.io for just $3, for now. You can also take a community copy, which this time, for once, is probably not gonna run out on the first day after I posted this video, that's all for now, and I will see you all next time. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some Kofi, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.